Okay, so we are uh, in uh, generalized linear models with examples in R. That worked right there. Uh, we're in chapter two, and we are on the final question, 2.19. Uh, um, so this is using a data set called Sharpener, and then it asks us a bunch of questions, so we'll look at them as we uh, come to them. So the first thing we need to do is uh, load uh, the GLM's data package okay, by installing and loading it. Um, and then uh, I'm going to call that data D. And here we have the first six rows of D. Okay, And you see that it's just uh, an outcome variable Y and then several predictor variables X1 through X10. We'll learn a little bit more about what these mean here in a little bit. But um, spoiler, they don't mean really anything. It's a fake data set. So, uh, so the first part is um, we are going to use a forward uh, elimination process or mm, not selection process, I guess is how I want to say it. Um, that's talked about at the last part of the chapter, of chapter two, so hopefully you've seen that, otherwise I'll talk a little bit about it. But, uh, but we are meant to find a suitable linear regression without interactions uh, for predicting y. Okay, so predicting this guy right here. Okay, so um, we're going to use uh, the step function in R, and this is what happens. Okay, so first we define a minimum model Okay, which you know we could set it to just being x1, but I'm setting it to one, uh, which just means just the intercept. Okay, and we need to define a maximum model. Okay, and so that's regressed on every possible variable. And so if instead of typing all that out, we can just do a, a dot there, a period there. Okay. Um, and then uh, there's also this mid model that we will not use right here, but we will use later. So I'm also defining that. Um, and I'm just arbitrarily choosing the first five variables to, to use as predictor variables, okay? So you'll see where that comes into play later. But, so the step function does this. It says, start with the minimum model, or whichever one we put in there. We could put a different model in there, but start with a particular model. And then I want you to add one variable at a time, selecting the variable that reduces uh, the residual uh, error, I think it's, I think it uses residual sum of squares, the most. Okay, so it's going to test out every variable to add in, and the one that uh, that reduces the residual sum of squares the most gets selected, and then that becomes the new model, and now it does it again. It tries different, um, it tries different variables and picks the one that improves the fit the best. Once it can no longer make um, improvement. To, to some criteria, um, it stops adding variables to the model, okay? Um, actually, maybe it doesn't use residual sum of squares. It might actually use uh, AIC. Um, that would actually make more sense. I, I would have to read about it, but um, anyway. So it says, okay, well, and so add variables one at a time, uh, and when you can no longer improve it, I think based on AIC, stop adding variables, okay? Um, and you can also set the scope. You can say, okay, uh, so we want, um, oh, you know what, I think that's not, I think it's supposed to be like that. Ooh, we'll see. Um, and we can say, okay, start at the minimum model and stop adding variables when you get to, you know, whatever the max model is. And here the max model is adding everything. Um, let me just run this really quick. Okay, good. Um, and then this k value, it doesn't mean anything for us right now, but this is the penalty term uh, when it is assessing the models, okay? So when k equals 2, the penalty is default to AIC, right? So if you go back and think about what AIC is, it's adding, uh, it's adding a penalty based on a multiplier of 2 for every parameter that you're using to, to you know, uh, pick models or, or, or to define your model, okay? Um, so we don't need to put that in here right now, but later we'll be, we will be asked to use BIC instead of AIC, okay? Okay, so, um, so you can see how this works here. So we start with the minimum model, and then it goes through and it tests every possible thing that it can test. So it could add uh, variable 10, or it could add one, or it could do not, that, 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 okay? Um, and, it's, and when it adds variable 10, you see that it really reduces uh, AIC. Okay, so, and that's why it's put first here. So now it iterates on that and says, okay, well now the new best model is actually Y is regressed on X10. 
And then again, it goes through and it tries to add each one of the variables and tries to see what the resulting penalty is, okay? And so we see that by adding x5, we get, you know, uh, the biggest reduction in AIC. So now that becomes the new model, 10 plus 5. Um, and now doing nothing is the best because adding anything makes the AIC worse, okay? And so that's the model that we get with this forward selection process. Okay, so now we do the same, but now we're doing backward selection or backward elimination. So what's backward elimination? Well, now we start with the full model and we iteratively eliminate one variable at a time, okay? Um, and so we're going backwards. So um, we run that guy. And again, you see how this works. So we start with the full model and it says, what happens when I eliminate X2? Well, then the AIC goes to this. What happens when I eliminate X1? It goes to this. And so it picks the best, which is eliminating X2. So the new model is X1, no X2, plus X3, dot, dot, dot. And now it tries to, now it tests each of these and it turns out that X1 uh, is the best or, or, you know, further removing X1 uh, is the best. Okay, so now the new model doesn't have X1 or X2, but it does have the rest. Okay, and now we have, and so now it says eliminating X4 is best. Okay, so now we have X3, no X4, X5, up to X10. Okay, and now we can't make further improvements. Okay, so that's the final model. Okay, so this is, so when we, when we use a different algorithm to find the, the you know, quote unquote best model, this is what we come to. Okay, notice that this is different than what we had, uh, what, what we had up here. So now we, we don't have to be stuck going forward or backwards in, in the selection process. Um, we could, uh, we can go both directions. So, so at each step we have available to us adding or subtracting the different variables. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to start at the mid model, which if you uh, remember the mid model, I'm going to scroll way up here, uh, was just defined as regressing on the first five terms here. Okay. That's arbitrary. Um, and if we start with a different mid model, we might come up with a different resolution to this algorithm, but let's just see what happens here. Okay. So we, we run that. Uh, and so I start with this model and it says the best thing I can do is to add 10 to add variable 10. Okay. So that becomes the new model. And now it says the best thing I can do is get rid of X3. And so I eliminate that. So now, so now I have this model. And then it says the best thing I can do is get rid of X4. And so now I have this model. And now it says the best thing I can do is get rid of X1. And so I have this model. And now it says the best thing I can do is get rid of X2. And I have this model. And now we can't make any further improvements. Okay. And now this model is actually the same as what we got with the forward selection process. So, um, all right. So uh, from the results, uh, deduce a model uh, that seems to fit the, the, the data the best. And I guess it is this one. It's this, it's why being regressed on X5 and X10. And I guess it's the best for a couple of reasons. One is because uh, I think it has the lowest AIC score. Is that correct? Negative 13.4. Yeah. So it's the best AIC score. And also two different algorithms converge on it. And so I guess that makes it the best. Again, that, that does not mean of all of the possible combinations that that one is the best. Okay. Um, there's actually over, there's 1,000, 24 different combinations of explanatory variables that we could put in here. Um, and so how do you do that? You, you go two to the power of 10. Um, so, so that's how you get that. Um, and we only, we only tested, you know, less than 20 models for, for certain less than 20 models. Okay. So, so the, that, that does not mean that this is the best possible model, but given these algorithms, it's performing the best. Okay. Again, if we started somewhere different, uh, you know, a different midway model, if we, or if we started at, uh, instead of just an intercept, we started at X1 plus X2 or whatever, we may arrive at different uh, resolutions. Okay. So now, uh, part five, we are supposed to repeat what we just did, but instead of using AIC, we're supposed to use BIC. Okay, now this is where the K argument comes in. Um, the way that we do that, um, let me pause this, I, I caught an error. Okay, so the way that we do that uh, is to use, instead of k equals 2, which again is the penalty multiplier for, uh, for AIC, in BIC, if you, you know, if you look back in the chapter or wherever, 
um, the you know the penalty multiplier is log of n or you know how many you know what's your sample size and so that's equal to the number of rows in our data set here okay so so now that becomes the penalty term and but everything else is the same it's just what we did already and so we can run these again, and let's just see if we come to the same conclusions. So forward, we get the same one. If we go backwards, don't remember if this is the same one. We're, uh, we'll go back and check, but then we'll check going both ways. Uh, let's hold on. I got an error here. Okay, there we are. Um, yeah. So we also get the best. Yeah. So we get the same. Uh, we get the same model there. Uh, x5 plus x10, um, but let me, uh, let's check the backward one to see if that's the same. So 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10 for the backwards one. Okay, so we actually get a different, we get a different model when we use BIC instead of AIC for the, for the backward elimination process. So whatever, uh, whatever that's worth. Okay, so, um, okay. So now the final part here is we're, we're supposed to read the help file for the sharpener data set. Okay, and we can do that with just question mark sharpener. Uh, and then comment on the use of these fitting methods for regression. So, so let's do that. So, um, okay, this happens quite a bit. Uh, in Colab, for some reason, if I run this, this command more than once, it doesn't, um, it doesn't work. I'm not really sure why. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so I guess we won't read it. Uh, you, you should do it on your own machine and, and read that. Um, but uh, as far as commenting on these fitting methods, um, so so if the goal is for prediction, then the, then these methods are fine, okay. Um, but as I've alluded to a few times, the order, you know, that you add these, or uh, hmm, how do I want to say this? Um, the uh, the the setup of your data will. Or, or can influence what uh, what these algorithms come out with, um, but even more than that, these algorithms are not really concerned with uh, with giving a mechanistic understanding of the system that you're trying to model. Right? It's just making a it's trying to it, it's using AIC to give you the best predictive accuracy, and sometimes predictive accuracy is very different than a mechanistic understanding of the model uh, of the system that you're trying to model. So. Uh, I, I'm not really sure what else to comment on uh, about it, but um, but anyway, uh, we will call that good.